So now I've got my solar panels, my inverters, and my test rig cable. Um, all I have to do is uh, just plug it all in. So at this point, the uh, inverters, they're not going to export energy. They're not going to do any communication or power exporting or anything. Basically, I just need to plug the inverters in. And there is an up and a down to these connectors. There's a faint little mark. They're not quite symmetrical. There is an up and a down to them. And I can feel and hear them click in place when they're actually working correctly. Oops, almost had that one upside down. Click them in place. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug the other end in to my 240 volt connector here that I use for my electric car charger. And these are big heavy connectors. You really gotta push those in nice and solid. So now at my breaker box, I can turn the power for the car charger outlet back on. And guess how much solar power I'm making right now? Zero. And the reason why is all these microinverters have a lot of safety features on them. Uh, one is anti-islanding, and that means that if the power goes out, the grid power, uh, the microinverters will not send out power from the solar panels. It's a safety feature because you don't want that power to go out onto the grid through transformers, uh, go back to a substation and electrocute a lineman or you know one of the utility workers. Uh, it's a standard safety feature. Now in this case, it also means that if the power goes out and then back on, the inverters, even if the solar panels are in full sunlight, the inverters will not activate for five minutes after power came back on. So let's say power came back on for just a moment, maybe it's still um, kind of a brownout, uh, the frequency or voltage is off. Um, it doesn't deal with any of that, it just says we're going to wait until five minutes after a really good solid, yes the power is there, um, it's in phase, it's the right frequency, everything the inverter's in expecting. So right now, uh, yeah, there's no power output, so I'm going to have to wait for about another four and a half minutes, and then we can check the power output from the inverters. Okay, it's been over five minutes now, so our solar panels should be uh, producing energy. Um, keep in mind, this is completely temporary and experimental. I would never even walk away from these. They're literally leaned up against my garage. I do have a clamp back here so they can't tip over if there's a gust of wind. Um, obviously, normally, this would all be completely bolted down and properly hooked up before you, you export energy. Um, I also just wanted to show you the solar panels and stand here just to show you they're, they're not insignificantly small. These are, these are fairly decent. Uh, so again, these are uh, 60 cell modules. These are the Helios brand. Uh, these ones are rated at 260 watts. And the reason why I'd like to go with these is I live about 30, 35 miles from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And these were literally manufactured in Milwaukee. These are local solar panels. And it's not real often that you can say that. So I'm definitely hoping to use uh, local power here. Uh, let's take a look at the inverters themselves now that the energy is running. So the inverters themselves don't have a whole lot of information on them. They don't have a LCD display screen or anything. But if we look on the back, it does have uh, just a single colored LED. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on video, but that is blinking green every once in a while. It's just a little pulse of a flash of green. And that is a code just indicating that the, um, the inverter is connected up to solar and to AC power and that it's, it's working. It's, it's outputting AC power. So now what we can do is use a clamp meter on our power line and see how much juice we're getting out of this. So I have a clamp on AC power meter and I'm just going to connect uh, the claw here through one of our hot leads and give it a second to see what it says. We're looking at 0 0.63, 0 0.62, 0 0.63 amps. So if we multiply that by the 240 volts this is running at, that's around 280 watts or so. So it's a, it's a 260 watt panel, but it's not perfectly pointed at the sun. The sky isn't perfectly clear, so we're getting considerably less than 260 watts. Looks like about 180 right now. And then we've got another way to measure this. Um, that's using uh, the Enphase Envoy. So let's go take a look at that now. Okay, here we have the Enphase 
Envoy. This is a web gateway and it also allows you to set up um, the microinverters in the first place. Uh, you'll notice there's no LCD screen on it or anything like that. It's just a couple little LEDs um, all green over on the side. So we're connected to the web. Um, we can connect our phone to the Envoy. Uh, we're making power and we're also communicating to the microinverters. Now this does communicate to the microinverters over the power line. So that does mean that the power that you have connected to it has to be nice clean power and it has to be not terribly far from uh, where uh, you're connected into the breaker box with, uh, with your microinverters. Now right now we're back inside my house because I have an electric outlet there that's straight off uh, of the, the, the breaker box, which connects right out to the garage as well. Uh, the other thing, uh, this is an S series Envoy. Uh, the other one was the M series. That was the round or the, the pillbox shaped one. Uh, this has built-in Wi-Fi, and by having it in the house, it does reach my household wireless Wi-Fi. And in the garage, it doesn't quite reach out there. Um, when I installed the cabling to the garage, I did include some, uh, some Cat5 cabling for networking. And right here, we do also have a hardwired LAN connection. So that's probably what I'm going to use for the final installation on here. Now, the other big thing with this device is it connects to a smartphone. So, for example, right here, oh no, my white balance is going bad. Let's, we'll, we'll use a manual white balance in here, make things look a little better. There we go. Um, so this talks to your phone. Um, it's just a little app that you download from Enphase. It was really easy to do. Uh, let's come in close to see some of the things we can do here. So this is the Enphase Toolkit app. I'm running this on my iPhone 5S. Uh, this is the software you would use for commissioning the system. I've already got my set up, system set up. I did this uh, last night. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the worst that I could say is when you first plug in the Envoy and connect it to the web, it's probably going to want to do a software update that could take 20 to 30 minutes. And then when you connect to the microinverters, they might also need a firmware update that can take a few minutes. So if we look here, um, I get information on my Envoy, um, on my arrays, and I'm going to connect to the Envoy right here. It might take just a moment to connect. Uh, the other thing, I need to make sure I'm on the same wireless network as the Envoy. So if I went to my network settings, I'd see the network uh, for my household wireless and then a separate one for the Envoy. Uh, another thing with the software is there's these great little videos. So the first time you go to do anything, if you're not quite sure what to do, there's a video and you can just play that. So here what it's doing is it's teaching you how to connect your wireless device to the Envoy. That's the, uh, the M. So it has these videos built in, which is a nice feature. Um, I'll close that. Just wait for a second for it to connect to the Envoy wireless. I hope I left my uh, wireless connection on that. If not, we'll change that. Maybe we'll just go take a look anyways. I'll just go to my settings here. I forgot to press the button there that turns on the wireless from the Envoy. So here it's up. I select that network and then I'll just come back out and go to the toolkit software. So now I'm going to be connecting directly to the Envoy and the Envoy is going to be connected to those microinverters. So I can, uh, in the first place, I can set them up and then after that I can take a look to make sure they're communicating, see how much uh, power is coming from them, things like that. So down at the bottom I got a couple different settings here. I'm going to click on the micros button here and it shows me I've got two inverters. Uh, they're both looking good, they're communicating, they're making power. And in the time since I've come inside, uh, the sun has moved over a little bit and it looks like this inverter here is making 105 watts. And the other inverter, which is uh, the other uh, solar panel is blocked, so we're getting 7 watts. So when a, a solar panel is shaded, uh, you can really, really knock the power down from it by a lot. And in this case, it's really not even facing into the sun. So getting any power from it at all is pretty amazing, actually. So right here in the software, we can uh, uh, do a lot of different things. We can also make like a little uh, map. 
show the um, how the solar panels are arranged. Then there's some other things in here too, like Enphase has a, uh, a battery product, um, kind of like the Tesla Powerwall, similar concept, and the S-Series Envoy will connect and communicate with that battery system. I do not have that battery system, but if I did, I could um, check out all the, the, the features and settings and everything on there from this uh, M -ser uh, S series Envoy as well. So with the Envoy, uh, with a smartphone, with the setup software, you can get those inverters uh, all connected. Um, let's say you had a little bit different uh, power standard where you are, you can change any of those types of settings, set the whole thing up, and then when you're done, this will output uh, information to the web, and then you can go take a look at the power output of your solar panels on a web page, or even publicly share it so all your friends can see. So now here we're looking at the Enlighten Manager software. So this is kind of like what your solar installer would use to, you know, set everything up, check everything over. And this shows you the full system. I mean, this is like all your information. Uh, now for my setup, I've just been experimenting with these two solar panels, two microinverters. Um, I have some kind of weird past week data in there. I have no idea why that's in there. It's some sort of an error, I think. Or it may have something to do with the fact that these were used microinverters. It's possible that some sort of production information followed the serial number of the microinverters. Um, I, if somebody has other ideas, please let, let me know. Um, but we can take a look at some different info in here. Um, the solar panels, how much power they've made today. We can take a look at some different types of graphs. Now, we're not showing a whole lot because, hey, it's you know part of one day of production. Uh, there's a number of reports. Uh, devices, we can look, take a look at the Envoy or at either of my, um, the, the two microinverters. It shows the power output of each of the microinverters right now. Uh, there's also events, so if you get some sort of an error alert, like a power outage, for example, it'll log that for you. Um, there's also some abilities to put in um, some still photos, uh, other graphs. Um, here, this much energy is the same as planting a certain number of trees, things like that. Uh, so if we just take a look at devices, it gives us information on our Envoy. Um, typically, this is reporting every five minutes, so it's not actually a live data stream. It's every five minutes, which that's more than enough information uh, for the most part. Uh, tells us we're communicating, we've got two inverters making power, we have good signal strength. And there's a few other settings we can change here. So this is kind of the um, system account level type stuff. There's also my Enlighten view, and that's more the consumer end of things. So typically, if you were a solar installer, this is what your, your client, the homeowner, would end up with. So it's kind of a more uh, cutesy, gooey interface. We have a cute little uh, chart of our solar production down here, a little diagram of uh, you know our solar panels here how much power we've made today um, you know a couple different types of charts um, then there's some other things like uh, for example how much energy we've made could replace a certain number of batteries or the same as planting a certain number of trees or things like that um, again not really all that useful just because we have so little data so far um, just having these inverters plugged in for a few hours. But there's, uh, oh, and one of the other things here that's really neat is, oh, it's here somewhere. Um, you can publicly share this. So if um, you've got, got solar and you wanna show off how much solar you're making, um, there's a link, you could email it to friends or you could embed it in a web page. I'm planning on doing that when I'm done with the whole system. So anytime you want to see how much power I'm, I'm making to use to charge my electric car or run my house, uh, you'll be able to see that at 300mpg.org. Okay, well I think this has turned into a much longer video than I originally intended it to be, but I just wanted to give you a sense of uh, what I'm doing, what I'm learning about solar energy right now. Um, I've taken a look through a lot of YouTube videos and uh, pretty often there'll be um, you know, some videos of guys installing solar panels or something, but they don't necessarily take you through all the steps. So I kind of wanted to show you what I've been doing so far. Um, I do also have some still photographs 
uh, screen grabs from my phone from when I was commissioning this setup with just these two experimental solar panels. Uh, so take a look at my blog at 300mpg.org and you can see some of those images um, for kind of more of a step-by-step -step of when I was actually setting up the Envoy in the first place. Um, the, lastly, I'm still not sure exactly whether I want to go with M215s or M250s. Um, when the sun was dead on exactly the way it should have been today, at one point I was doing uh, 235 watts from one inverter. And that's actually more than what these inverters are supposed to be able to do. They're supposed to max out at 225 watts peak. Uh, still, it looks like it's probably a pretty rare occasion that uh, these 260 watt panels, which in the real world, they're gonna get less than 260 watts, um, are really running full tilt. Um, and the 250 watt inverters do cost a little bit more. Plus, I still have a uh, possibility of getting some used 215 watt inverters. So I'm still kind of on the fence which way I want to go. Um, but that's it for now. Tune in next time for more information on what I'm doing, building my solar garage. Check it out, 300mpg.org. Till next time, stay charged up.